afternoon. Uh, I'm highly thankful to JNK Chapter of Indian Orthopedic Association as well as the Department of Orthopedics, JMC Sirinagar, <coughs> for giving me the opportunity to talk on the post-operative care and pain site management. In, so I will not take much time as we are getting late for the hands-on workshop. <coughs> I would like to, uh, before I start, I would like to quote this line from Dr. Mangal Barihar. The post-operative <coughs> period, uh, the time spent in post-operative period is much more important than it is spent in the operating room. Are Elizabeth surgeries different from conventional orthopedic surgeries? Yes, they are. In conventional orthopedic surgeries, the manipulation of soft tissue or bone takes place only at the time of surgical intervention. While as in Elizabeth, it starts in the war and it continues in the post-operative period as well. So the chances of complications are more and uh, therefore uh, good post-operative care is very important. And complications can be prevented by diligent post-operative care. And if complications occur, they should be picked up early and dealt early. Hence, appropriate post-operative care, contact with the patient, and most important, patient education is very important to have a good outcome. When you talk about the post-op phases, we divide it into three phases, latent phase, distraction phase, and consolidation phase. The latent phase is the early post operative phase, it starts once the patient is out of the table till the start of distraction. And uh, basically it starts before the patient leaves the theater. Before the patient leaves the OT, we have to, uh, the surgeon should always check these for uh, some of the things which include, first of all, has the post-operative plan been carried out? So get a proper radiological image, uh, preferably a fluoroscopic image before leaving the operating room. To check for the bleeding sites from corticotomy site or pin sites. And if there is uh, any, apply a pressure, temp external tamponade so as to stop the bleeding. Ensure all the cut wires have been cut smoothly to avoid injury. Ensure the pins which are sharp, they are covered with the adhesive tape. And also check range of motion at the adjacent joints, that's very important because the wires and pins may sometimes impede movement. If they impede, we can immediately go for the surgical release and check for the distal pulse is the most important thing. In the uh, early post-operative phase, three things are very important from the post-operative care point of view. One is pain relief. Uh, second is the uh, attitude of the patient, uh, the positioning of the extremity. And third is rehabilitation. Pain relief is very important in the post-operative period. Educate pain relief has, uh, will help in educate rehabilitation of the patient. Plus, if the pain persists, it will lead, if patient will adapt some protective postures that may lead to contractures. For example, in uh, femoral frames, flexion at hip is very common. In uh, people frames, flexion, deformity at the knee and uh, contracture at the ankle leading to plantar flexion is very common. For pain relief, we can give non-steroidal and inflammatory drugs, we can give opiates. But the long <coughs> duration of NSAIDs should be avoided because they may interfere with the regenerate. Then positioning and posture is very important. For tibial frame, we should always keep the knee extended, preferably by keeping a pillow at the distal ring. Don't keep pillow under the leg, otherwise it will lead to flexion contractures at the knee. The plantar uh, flexion deformity can be prevented either by application of uh, foot plates or straps, uh, like bandage on the plantar aspect of the forefoot and tying it on the frame to keep the ankle in plantigrade position. Similarly, in femoral frame, the patient should, have, uh, should lie prone for several hours and uh, extension exercises by taking the patient off the edge of the bed to start extension at the hip. This is all to prevent contractures, which are very difficult to treat if they develop. This is the foot plate to prevent flexion contracture. Again, a foot strap used uh, over the foot orthosis and tied to the ring of the frame to keep the foot plantigrade. 
Then destruction phase. Complications are more common in destruction phase of Elizero. And in this phase, surgeon has to be very vigilant. And there should be frequent follow-up. It depends uh, the duration of follow-ups, but at least two weekly follow-up is very important. And during this follow-up, a detailed clinical and radiological evaluation is required. And uh, the checklist, once the patient comes during destruction phase, we should monitor destruction both clinically as well as radiologically, range of movement at the adjacent joints, neurological examination, distal vascular examination, pin sites should be inspected, and we should also check frame stability. Monitoring destruction. Normally, destruction is done at the rate of one minute per day in four divided intervals. Everybody knows it. <clears throat> and patient has to be taught, has to be educated about this thing, the protocol. And preferably flags with arrows should be fitted on the frame that will guide the patients for distraction. On follow-ups, the distance that has been moved should be checked clinically on the threaded rods. This can simply be done by a tape applied to the connecting rod. And uh, it can be measured how far the connecting rod has moved at the follow-up. And this should com be compared with the distraction that is achieved radiologically at the corticotomy site. <clears throat> the range of motion, both active and pass passive ROM should be measured as at each visit a decrease in ROM at subsequent visits and evolving contracture. If contracture is evolving, rehabilitation is very important, stretching exercises, physio and splints may be required. And uh, if severely affected, sometimes the goal of treatment may have to be abandoned to take care of contractures. And these can be corrected as it has already been dealt in the preceding lectures, either by incorporating it into the uh, ring or we may. Uh, postpone uh, the lengthening to the second stage. The neurological examination. EMG studies have shown that 80% of the patients who undergo distraction, develop signs and symptoms, uh, develop neural injury. So distal motor and sensory evaluation is very important. During distraction, the neurological injury can have the following events. It can have the following sequence. <laughs> hyperesthesia, anesthesia, motor weakness, complete paralysis. And it's very important to pick them up early because once motor paralysis sets in, it is very difficult. The recovery, chances of recovery are very poor. So early picking up of uh, neural injury due to distraction should be the priority during the distraction phase. Then pin site management, very important uh, this part of the management in the post-operative period. The pin site infection is a well-known complication and complication can be minimized by proper placement of the pins, proper techniques, use of proper techniques while insertion and proper post-operative care. Intraoperative has already been dealt in the uh, preceding lectures. You should avoid tourniquet because it will uh, lead to ischemia and thermal necrosis. So, things will be potentiated, leading to more necrosis. Low speed drills should be used. Sharp drills should be used for pre drilling. Always pre drill before inserting a pen. Use drill sleeves to protect the skin from thermal necrosis. A saline soaked gauze should be used around the wires to take the heat off. Some use saline, and nowadays some use low hexidine soaked gauze. The wires should be placed properly. The wire should never be under tension. If there is tension, there's every chance of getting uh, pin track infection. Avoid excessive pressure around, around the wires and pins. If possible, secure the dressing around the pin with the help of a rubber stopper. And you can see, this is uh, the photograph on the left side. Intro photograph, you can see the drill is being used and uh, drill drilling is run before putting the uh, half pin. And you can see the saline irrigation to take the heat off, which is generated during drilling. <clears throat> Again, in the right hand side, you can see a gauze placed. You can see it is pink in color because chlorhexidine has been used. It will take the heat off, plus the uh, disinfectant will take care of infection. And these are the rubber stoppers around the dressings. 
pinside care it is a very controversial topic should we dress the pinsides or not some say yes and some say no and some say you should only dress pins which are around the joints because around the joints there is there is always constant friction which may lead to infection how often do we should we change the dresses some say twice daily some say once daily some say weekly and some say dressings are not required at all how to clean the pin sites there are different disinfectants which range from normal saline soap and water iodine alcohol and chlorhexidine can a patient take shower with frame on can he swim again there are some people prefer some people don't even russians russians prefer their patients should swim after application of the frame we at our institute follow the kurgan method of pin site care <clears throat> it is very simple in this we clean the hand uh, the patient or the one who takes care of the pins he cleans the hands with soap and water soaks a clean sterile gauze into percent chlorine hexidine solution squeezes till it is damp and the pin is cleaned like shown in the figure and the pin should be cleaned right from the should start from the skin and go upwards towards the frame then don't it bring it back towards the skin and we should use separate gauzes for separate pins and wires if there is crust don't disturb it unless there are signs of infection and the dressings dressings can be made by making a wire slit or simple slit in the gauze for pins we use wire slit uh, we use simple slits uh, wire slits and for wires we use a simple slit as shown in the diagram adjacent diagram for uh, infected pins or where there is oozing we can use foam dressings remember these things repeat the procedure same procedure for each pin use separate gauze for cleaning each, each pin repeat cleaning and dressing procedure every seventh day in case of infection clean and dress uh, dress the pin or wire once or twice daily if the patient is allergic to disinfectant like chlorhexidine we can simply use normal saline look for signs and symptoms of pin site infection which all of you know pain local redness discharge fever stiffness and patient may not feel well and this is very important one should be able to pick up which pen pin is uh, normal and which pin is infected and uh, the look has been divided in three parts calm irritated and infected calm is a healthy acceptable pin irritated is a badly behaved pin infected is unacceptable pin site and you can see this is a calm pin there is it looks clean there is no oozing no redness not swollen not painful and it can be dressed weekly and one should remember it typically looks like uh, the piercing after the girls pierce their these uh, ear lobes irritable pen there will be some redness around the pen there will be some tenderness around uh, at the skin and there is a little bit of ooze which is straw colored and this pen should be dressed once daily and infected or unacceptable pins are very painful tenderness there may be tenderness of the bone redness may spread around the skin very oozy there may be pus discharge swelling of the limb and they may have constitutional symptoms they need twice daily cleaning and this has already been dealt uh, in the previous lecture book by dr gn i don't need to go in this this is the classification system uh, by otterburn and their management has already been dealt stability of frame is very uh, important at every visit one should check the loose uh, loosening of nuts and bolts and tighten them check for loosening of the wires one of the important symptom uh, of loose wire is patient may complain of pain or ambulation if yes it should be tightened stability of frame should be checked see if the limb is translating in the frame if uh, it is translating then it is an unstable construct and we may use to add wires or pins loosening and instability of the frame sets a vicious circle once there is pain patient will not ambulate this will lead to osteoporosis there will be further loosening of the pins further infection further pain and so on and the process repeats besides unstable frame will interfere with the regenerate ambulation is encouraged as tolerated by the patient ambulate with the proper gait uh, ambulation with the proper gait is very important educate and train the patient for ambulate uh, for tibial frames patient should amb uh, be ambulatory with ankle 
Ambulation with uh, ankle plantar flexed and knee flexed may lead to contracture. So education about gait is very important. Radiological evaluation is important. It has already been done uh, dealt by Dr. Iftikhar. Initially, uh, when we uh, go for a distraction, the clinical distraction may not match the radiological distraction because it takes two to three mm of distraction at the frame for the soft tissue get to get stretched. And after that, uh, this uh, bone at corticotomy side will get distracted. After that, there should be a, the radiological clinical correlation should be exact. In case of angular deformities, angular angles should get corrected. Once distraction is complete, full length radiograph should be taken for uh, measurement of the mechanical axis and for measurement of correction. Thank you.